Welcome to the Suicide Prevention Show. I'm Jackie Simmons, your host of the show. And I am super excited that you're here. We are going to deep dive into a world of authenticity. Authenticity when it comes to networking and connecting with another human being. And our guide for this segment is none other than Debbie Hoffman. And we're gonna go into how to create deeper connections and get more yeses. And someone said, Jackie, what does networking have to do with suicide prevention? And I'm like, oh, you just wait. Show up, suit up, here it comes. So, little magic, I'm back in the studio. Debbie, come on into the studio and let's have a conversation. We're going to show them how it's done. So, as the tech crew is working to get her arranged, I'm going to say that you guys are amazing. Magic, there you are. Hi, Debbie. Hello, Jackie. How are you? I am well. I am super, super excited that you're here. Thank you for being willing to make the time and come on the show. Well, you are so welcome. It's my pleasure. I love the work that you're doing in the world. So anything that I can do to support it and you, I'm here for you. Let's deep dive into this connection because for many people, the connection between business and suicide is not so obvious, but that's because they don't know what I know. And what I know is that one of the fastest groups suicide attempts is rising in are entrepreneurs. And it's wow. because we feel so lonely. This is what we're hearing time and time again, that one of the spikes is happening because entrepreneurs are now, you know, they were entrepreneurs. Now they have to be onlinepreneurs. Now they have to figure out how to deliver online. Now they have to figure out this. And many of them are not willing entrepreneurs. They're accidental entrepreneurs. They got furloughed. They got laid off. The, the businesses shifted. And they're kind of like in a sea without a rudder. And what you're doing with creating space for people to authentically network, to actually show up as who they are, not who they think they should be. You know, this is a suicide prevention at its best because it not only gives them a place to connect, but it gives them a place to build some financial resiliency. And that's the two hallmarks of connecting is one, it builds your social emotional structure and the other is it builds the financial structure for your business. Yeah. So there we go. Now I have to ask, how did you get into this? Would you please tell us where you came from and what, what happened to create this? It's actually a pretty amazing story and I'll, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. Uh, basically, I was at a conference years ago and I had a booth for these wellness products that I was representing at the time. And a woman asked me to follow up with her because she wasn't ready to make a decision right there on the spot. So I followed up with her for 14 months, Jackie. Not very easy to do. Finally, she said yes and became a client. And I continued to follow up with her like I always did with any new client. And she basically said to me one day, Debbie, you're amazing at follow-up. I struggle with it. You need to do something with this. You have a gift. People are struggling. We need to talk. And one thing led to the next. And she inspired me and encouraged me and gently pushed me to launch this business. I didn't wake up one day, Jackie, and say, I'm amazing at follow-up and people struggle with this. I need to teach this. It actually was because of her inspiration and guidance that I've now been able to help hundreds and hundreds of entrepreneurs. And this is my gift. Like this is what I was supposed to be doing on the planet and thank God for her. And sometimes we need that person who has that 30,000 foot view to let us know what our gifts are because sometimes we just take, most of the time we just take it for granted. We just do these things naturally, right? We all have that gift, that thing that we just do and we don't know it's special until somebody tells us. So that's how it happened. It's kind of <laughs> amazing. That's a really short walk through your life. So yeah, you were inspired by another walk. person. Okay. Yep. You were inspired by another person. So let's talk about what were you doing before you became this kind of an entrepreneur? 
Well, I worked on Wall Street for 20 years. I was a Wall Street woman back in the 80s, and I sold securities to institutional investors and had a very, very successful 20-year career. Uh, but it was time once my son was born. I was like done. I needed to come home. And that's when I came home and became a mom and started this wellness business. Got it. So you were in the wellness business. So talk a little more about that because the difference between the wellness business and networking. Yeah. So, whoop, did I lose connection? There we nope. go. Okay. So, you know, what kind of wellness business? Because there's a whole bunch of them there. Yeah, these were health and these were products that basically helped protect people from electromagnetic radiation from cell phones and computers and Wi-Fi and a, a very okay. hydrating water system. So it was all about strengthening your immune system and keeping you more resilient. Mm -hmm. And I built a team of thousands of consultants and I taught them my follow-up system that I had created on Wall Street. And that's why I grew one of the fastest growing teams in the history of that company and helped thousands of people improve their health and wellness. So okay. it was a great so, journey. Yeah, well, now we're gonna talk because very, very few people can stand in authenticity, and that's what you're all about, and say that I went into network marketing and because I followed a follow-up system, I built a team and had some financial success with it. So what happened? I mean, are you still in that group? Are you still having that team? You know, you're not gonna let, I'm not gonna let this elephant go, all right? Because the elephant in the room is that the statistics are not great. Yeah, the, the statistics are not great for people going into a, any network marketing organization because the skill set required is one of emotional resiliency. And we, we don't get that in elementary school. Or, and we certainly didn't get it in the household that I grew up in. Yes. So the challenge that people have is they want the residual income, they want the lifestyle, they want the success, and they are emotionally not equipped to yeah. do what needs to be done or even to handle the money like a lottery winner. You know, they're not emotionally yeah. equipped for that particular thing because they haven't built the skill. So what was that journey like? For you? you came in from Wall Street, you had a follow-up system that you had been used with using with stock people and Wall Street people. And so you had this system. So for you, it was just plug and play. It didn't matter Wall Street or water. Yeah. No, no, it actually, I have so many things I want to share based on what you said. So the first thing I want to say is emotional resiliency is one thing that's really important, but also most people in network marketing don't have the follow-up and sales skill set. So that's where I come in. They've never been taught that. Most people are they're just passionate about their products, their company, their team. Mm -hmm. They love the community that they have with their company, but they don't have the skills. And that's why most people fail because they don't know how to deal with rejection. They get too pushy and salesy. They come on too strong because they're so passionate and they quit. So that, that was one thing I want to make sure I said. The other thing is I, d I was not successful right away coming out of Wall Street. And the reason oh. is... Yeah. What were you going to say? No, I'm just grateful that you're willing to peel back the curtain. And the oh, reason I will, is... And, and I, will, I will relate this to networking, which is what our conversation is today. So I came out of Wall Street. And on Wall Street, we were push, 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 sell, 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 aggressive, assertive. That's I, I was a woman in a man's world, so I had to be extra assertive. But that was part of the deal on Wall Street. That's what people expected. So then I come into this entrepreneurial world and I'm working with individuals on their health and well-being and I'm coming on just as strong. And I was like, why? I kept hitting the wall and I'm thinking, what, why isn't this working? What's going on here? And finally, one day I had that aha moment that this wasn't about pushing my agenda and trying to sell. It was about building connection and showing that I care and showing up in service to people and letting go of the agenda and just being there to help people. And when I did that, Jackie, when I had that shift, everything turned around and I created tremendous success in my health and wellness business. And so I showed up at these networking events, pushy and salesy and people were like, oh, here's, I know they were saying, oh, here comes Debbie. She's gonna talk to me about that stuff again, right? I didn't ask for permission. I didn't ask questions. I didn't get curious. I just hosed people down. 
And so what I teach Yeah, the clients, fire hose technique is really common in networking oh, events. Oh my God. Right. So now I teach people a whole, my clients, a whole different approach to networking, which is showing up in service and seeing how you can help people. And also I had gone through bankruptcy and foreclosure. That's a whole oh. part of my story. We didn't get to talk about yet, but we lost everything, like everything. My husband was a real estate. Um, he was a home, custom home builder and the real estate market crashed in the Bay area. Everything was lost. And so it was devastating. And I showed up at these networking events, like, I'm not going to tell anybody about this. I'm going to put on my happy face and everything is going to be fine. And boy, was I wrong because people can feel the energy. I had this desperate, depressed energy. So do not go to networking events if you're not in a high frame of mind because people, energy is subtle, but very powerful and people are going to feel that. So Anyway, I shared a lot of different things here, but I just want to make sure I got all those points out because they're all super, super important to my journey and what, what I'm coaching my clients to do now. They're super important to the journey because the journey we're on is not how to talk yourself off the ledge, but how to build a life that you are so passionately, positively engaged in that you never get near the ledge. The ledge doesn't even exist for you. Right. And so your story about recognizing the elephant in the room, what was the problem? And the problem is the same problem that I had. I just took a lot longer to figure it out than you did. So kudos to you for noticing and naming the elephant, which is I wasn't showing up honest. I mean, we can call it authenticity and it sounds really good, but the bottom line is we were not showing up honest. Yeah. And people could feel it and they were, people get repelled by desperate energy. So that's why I always say, let go of your agenda, show up in service. People's hearts will open. Their defense mechanism will come down because when people are hosing folks down at networking events, they shut, the other person shuts down and they don't want to deal with you. They don't want to help you. They don't want to have anything to do with you. But if you go show up in service, Jackie, and see, ask questions, get curious, see how you can help them and whatever they need, their wall will come down, their heart will open, and they'll want to do anything they can to support you in return. So it's actually the less you talk about yourself and the less you promote yourself and, and talk about what you do, the more clients you'll end up getting in the long run and the deeper connections and partnerships you'll make with JV partners or referral partners. It's just takes a little longer, but people are going to come out to help you however they can, because they're going to fall in love with you because you're, you're doing something different than anyone else is doing at these networking events. You're not hosing them down and trying to sell them. That's important. Not trying to sell people. It's kind of like not being attached to the outcome of a conversation. Right. I mean, uh, full disclosure, you and I met because I was laser coaching at a three-day event for one of my mentors. And in 15 minutes, we had a conversation. We, we talked through a couple of strategies for how you could handle the event. You made a very clear request that I took back to my mentor, you're the organizer of the event. And then we had our second conversation. And it was one of those conversations with you know, just like, let's show up and be totally authentic. You know, I don't know if I can get you what you want. You don't know what you're going to do if I can't. And why do I like you? <laughs> you know? I mean, that's pretty much what that second conversation was. Yeah, you know, where you're like, can you get me what I want? And I'm like, I don't know. What are you going to do if I can't? You're like, I don't know. And then it was like, I like you. <laughs> Yeah. Both of us said that. I like you. I know yeah. we're going to do something together here. And we had no idea what it was going to look like. And we're creating lots of things in the background. But in the meantime, this sense of authenticity, this ability to not need to be the smartest person in the room, to not need to be the one who has all the answers, and to be willing to ask for what you want. All right. There's no, I'm, I'm going to be bluntly honest with anybody on this call. In my world, there is no reason to build a network if you are not willing to go to that network and ask for what you want. Exactly. Ugh. exactly. And that just hit me really hard exactly. because when it came to launching 
the suicide prevention movement, the most difficult moments I've had were writing the emails to the people who already know me and saying, this is what I'm doing and this is how I would like for you to support me. And this is not the easiest email in the world to write, but it is the most important. Yeah. You know, it's like having a conversation that matters to show up and to say, this is important. Yeah. And it's important and I, to me. And now, you know, can we do something together? So at a networking event, the first step is not that one. I mean, let's face it, you and I in <coughs> two 15 minute conversations, we crossed the, you know, the desert that most people don't know how to get across. And we had an authentic connection for people just starting out in networking. They're just, they're going to come to a networking event. They're going to come to, and I'm going to put the link for the one that you're holding um, on an ongoing basis. So we'll drop that link in for everybody. You know, the, they're going to come to a networking event. What do they need to be ready to do? What do they need to be ready to say? What are the rules of the game, Debbie? Love that question. Thank you. So there's a few things. I am huge on preparation. And most people tell me when they come to work with me that they just wing it a lot. Like I did, they use that term, I wing it. So the first thing you want to do is to prepare what you're going to say when you're talking to somebody just casually and they say, so Jackie, what do you do? Right? Like we get that question all the time and that's where the fire hose comes out. And that's where it comes out with most people. If you're and not prepared, if you're not prepared. So you want to practice, you want to write down what you're going to say, practice it, not be a robot. You want to be very conversational, but at the beginning, you're going to need to practice it. And you're going to need to look in the mirror and smile and have a lot of energy and passion and not just have these words because research shows that 7% of the impact that you have on somebody comes from the words that you say. The rest is body language, tone of voice, enthusiasm, expression, all of that, right? And so wait, you wait, wait, practice. wait, wait, you went through that so fast. I want to make sure people heard it. Only 7% of our impact on other people are the actual words that come out of our mouth when we are face to face. That's what in Zoom to Zoom counts. That's why this is such a critical skill because 93% is not what I'm saying. It's the body language, the tonality, the how I'm saying it. And even though this study has been out for a long time, Debbie, I think when it comes to networking, people forget. Yeah. I've, I've been to some Zoom networking events at high end and people are showing up eating and they're showing up dressed like they rolled out of bed. They haven't brushed their hair. You know, and, and then they want to be taken as a professional. And I'm like, 93% is how you're showing up exactly. and only 3% are your credentials. Guess what? Uh, you know, so it's That's a pretty great. big deal. Now I'm like going, oh crap, did I brush my hair on that last break? You look beautiful. Yeah, it, yeah, it was a short break. So <laughs> there are some simple strategies that we can help people put into place yeah. to handle this. So let's start with the easiest ones. What other than recognizing that the words that they say need to be natural to them and that they're not the most important thing. Right. So What's what you want to so you want to do what you want to do is like I mentioned earlier, get in a very high frame of mind before you show up at the event. And that could be putting on some music and dancing. It could be doing some exercise, whatever it is that gets you your juices flowing do that first. So you want to be in a very high frame of mind and you want, when you're sharing what you do, yes, you want me to stop? <laughs> I'm going to pause you right there. All right. Mine, I think everybody on this show gets it. Mine is the music, the upbeat music, the dancing. <clears throat> you said something else that was kind of critical, which was exercise. So it's just, you know, move your body. Yeah. A third one that I know is really relevant for a lot of people is a joy journal. 
just get a notebook and the only thing you put in this notebook are the things that make you smile. And so before you go to a networking event, before you click your camera on, look at your journal and read a few things that will make you smile. Oh my God, I'm so glad you brought this up because this is something that would really help all the people who are listening, who have been depressed, who have thought about suicide and all that, because this is something that I've created. I created a, it's an accountability journal. So it's for the follow-up processes, but it's also for the internal work. And what you do every morning is you write down five things you're grateful for. No matter what's happening in your life, you can always find five things that you're grateful for. And gratitude creates the highest vibration in the body, even more than love. So when you when you're when you show gratitude for something, you're gonna create, you're gonna bring, you're gonna create more situations in your life to be grateful for. It's just like the law of attraction, right? So that's mm -hmm. the first step. The second is to create your dream day. And what this looks like is you write down in the morning. So I have this practice every morning. I write down my five things I'm grateful for. My dream day is what, what my day looked like as if it's already happened. So I for write that, out exactly what I want day. to have happen. Huh? For that one day. For that one not, day. I not do. for what do I want my dream day in my life, but what do I want today to be yes. if it was my dream day? Got it. Every day. Every day, dream day. So imagine it's the end of the day <clears> and you're looking back on your day, talking about how wonderful it was. That's what you're writing in the morning. Awesome. And I'll tell you, Jackie, it's so powerful. So if any of the listeners are, you know, have been depressed or are depressed and things aren't looking good right now and you just, you know, you're... All right. Hold it. Stop. You want to write That's this down. That's intervention. We want prevention. So we don't want you to wait. If you're listening, we're right. not looking for you to wait till you're depressed. We're not looking for you to wait to have a bad day. Let's just give you a vaccine to prevent yes. both of those. Yes. Okay. And so when this you, is a very powerful practice. And when you speak it out less, so now I'm going to actually give you the dream day on steroids. Okay. So this is something really fabulous that I learned from one of my coaches. So you do the dream day every morning. And you actually live into what you created. You live into what you wrote down, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can do what's called the cosmic claim, which is a more longer term picture of what you want your life to look like. It could be the next three months, six months. You know, I used to do it when I had live events and I'd create the exact outcome that I wanted. And then you call a couple people in your life, family, friends who love you and know you well, and you share this with them as if it's already happened and you don't tell them that you're making this up until the end because they're going to celebrate with you and endorphins are going to kick in and it feels amazing to talk like this. And then at the end you say, well, it hasn't happened yet, but this is what I'm going to create. And like there, everyone starts laughing and it's just an amazing power, amazingly powerful experience. Okay. I'm going to put a pause button right there and go, the one qualification for the person that you want on the other end of the phone, that they are unconditionally supportive yes. of your vision and your journey. Exactly. Which for me on my entrepreneurial journey was not my family and not some of my friends that I had had for long term because yeah. they were not entrepreneurs. Yeah, you want to call and, someone who loves you and who, who supports you for sure. Yeah. Unconditional support is who you want. And my friends, I've got two friends that know me now. Like when I, every time I have an event, I would call them and they knew what was coming and they were like, oh my God, Debbie, I'm so excited. That's so awesome. Like they, and I'll tell you, it does, it creates endorphins in the body. You feel so good and so alive and so energized. So this is definitely prevent, prevention type stuff that people can do to make mm -hmm. sure that they stay in a high frame of mind. So. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to shift it from the energy of if you're struggling, do this into let's prevent struggling right now. Do this. Exactly. I love, love, love that. Cool. So that's, those are my, you know, the, and then I write down, you know, I journal every morning. I have a spiritual practice. I read this book that's all about being aware of how you're showing up in the world. So having a spiritual daily practice will really help everyone to stay in that upbeat, high energy, positive place. So I'm All right, really we're, we're going to tease everybody because what you just did was just one of those things that drives me crazy. So you said there's this book. So I'm going to challenge everybody. 
Debbie will reveal her book that she reads every single day. And I will reveal my book that I read every single day in the VIP lounge. Okay. So if you have claimed being a very inspiring person, you're going to get both books. All right. So, and if you haven't, go there and get it done. And Katie, please drop that link so that if you haven't become that, now you got another reason. We've been giving them reasons all day long. Why do we want people in that group? I'm just going to pause long enough to say, because you get to interact with all of the speakers like Debbie. Yeah. And so Debbie, your willingness to give extra value, to engage in that group, to, to answer questions and to be available is just one of the greatest gifts that I can possibly imagine for the people who are you know, just exploring this idea. What does prevention look like versus you know, the normal day-to-day -day autopilot? You know, and what does networking look like in this new age? Because trust me, I've got on the other side of this curtain, I have 5,000 business cards that are not going anywhere right now. Oh Why? Because God. I bought them. It seemed like a good idea at the time. When I ordered them, it just seemed like a good idea. Now they're waiting. Right. So what's, what's next for networking? I mean, how do we create the connections when we can't show off our fancy business? And trust me, my business card is cute. But we can't show off our business cards. We can't hand someone something tangible. Right. Right. And there are so many people who are really lost right now because they don't know how to create a connection on video. Right, right. And I know it's possible because we've never met in person. Right, and we created a great connection. Mm -hmm. The thing that's so great right now, the positive about all this that's going on in the world is that now you can network with people from all over the world, not just people in your backyard. And that's what you know i've been doing twice a month and people are coming and showing up and creating great connection and getting clients and building you know jv partner relationships so in this day and age like you said it's really important in terms of preparation to show up professional to look good to you know be dressed well and have your hair not a mess right you don't want to be having a bad hair day when you show up and to really be smiling and looking for people there who you want to follow up with because the at the networking event like so many times people say to me networking doesn't work or networking is a waste of time and it's not that networking is a waste of time and it doesn't work it's that they weren't working it right they were going looking for clients so this is another way to prepare is to set the intention to not be looking for clients to set the intention to be looking for those people who you can collaborate with right and they could be JV partners, they could be just power partners, or they could just be referral partners. Doesn't matter what you call it. They're all a little different, but it's about finding people who are going to support you and you're going to support them. And that, that will change your experience totally because my clients who hated networking, they stopped going because they felt uncomfortable trying to find clients and they didn't like how everybody was pushy and salesy with them. So they stopped going. And I said, look, just show up wanting to help people get curious, ask questions, make a difference, be a servant leader. And they go, I can do that. And then everything changed for them. So, and then the other thing you want to be prepared for is after people say, ask what you do, what do you say next? Like what happens next? What kind of, you know, be, you have to be prepared with the questions you're going to ask to get to know people. Right. And then if people are interested in what you have to offer, what are you going to say next? So it's really important to have this all prepared in advance. So that, and then if somebody has a concern or an objection that comes up that you don't get flustered and thrown off track, how are you going to respond to that? So it takes preparation to do all of this. So you don't just show up at a networking event and wing it, right? You have to know what you're going to do. And this is a key thing also, Jackie, is to set time in your calendar. As soon as you put the event in your calendar, set time a few days after the event block off time to follow up with people because at the event, you're just meeting people for the first time. The follow-up is how that, that relationship, that connection is nurtured like step by step. That's where the trust and the rapport and the connection get developed through the follow-up. It's not going to happen at the networking event. That's just where it starts. 
it, they go. It doesn't happen at the networking event. That's just where it starts. That's a really, really important piece. Okay, so I'm gonna name an elephant in the room. We have a VIP gift and we have an attendance gift. And I wanna make sure that people do not get confused. So you can talk about them in any order you want and my job is to clean up any potential confusion. So you tell us which link you want us to drop first. We're not gonna drop the VIP link, by the way, other than you all becoming a VIP. We will help you get there where you're a very inspiring person and you can get the other gift from Debbie. What's the first one? What do they get just for showing up? Because these are people who, my God, some of you all have been with me. I mean, we're in our like 20 out of a 24 hour event and it's just amazing the people who are still around and I want to make sure that they understand. So you've got scripts for powering up your sales without being salesy. And that's just an amazing concept in and of itself. So tell me more. <laughs> so I've never done this before. This is very new where I'm sharing scripts outside of my clients. And these are scripts for, for scenarios that entrepreneurs deal with all the time. So it's three key scripts to power up your sales without being salesy. And the first one is you, let's say you had a conversation with somebody, a discovery session or whatever you do to talk to somebody, when you talk to somebody who's interested in learning about what you have to offer, you invited them to work with you, they weren't ready, and then they go MIA. Like, what do you do? Like, what do you say, okay? And then there's a scenario, a script for someone you met maybe a long time ago at a networking event that you never called. And most people say, oh, I'm just gonna throw the card out because I can't call now, it's been too long. But no, yes, you oh, can call now and there's and something that you can say. Too long is a relative term for some people. Oh, I didn't call them this week, I'm gonna throw the card away. Yeah, no, this is, I'm talking about six months, a year, like you can still call those people, okay? Cool. Good to know. And then the other uh, script is you met somebody, let's say at a networking event, and you really feel, you know, you were drawn to them, you want to get together with them for coffee, you want to learn more about each other's businesses, what do you say? So there's three scripts, they're super helpful, super simple, but the key thing is, you don't want to be reading them. I don't want people to be robotic. It's just a roadmap to have next to you to keep you on track so that you don't go all over the place. But you never want to read a script because people will know and you will lose connection and they will tune out. So that's what I'm offering. I'm excited about it. So that's going to be in the chat box for everyone because when you said that you were thinking about offering this, I was like, oh my God, these are amazing. Many, many people are afraid to follow up because they don't know what they're going to say. Right. And we exactly. hear it over and over and over again. So having three scenarios, practice is pretty important. So one of the things you can do is you can attend, and the link has already been dropped for success of the game. Dot com. That's the link to get to the every other week networking event. And so you can go to the networking event and practice. Now that's not the attendance gift. Why? Because there's a charge for attending that event. It's $19. It's less than, you know, I would say less than coffee, but that's not true. Um, it's less than lunch and we used to have to pay for lunches. So the bottom line is you can go to that networking event. That's networking at a higher scale. Why? Because everyone has paid to be there. Right. So it's not a free and open event. It's a different level of networking. So you can go there, you can meet people, and then you can talk to these people and have these follow-up conversations using the script that's most appropriate. Right. And one of the challenges of many networking things, and especially in network marketing, which is where we started, they said, it's a numbers game. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> and it's not true. For the vast majority of us, it is not numbers, it is connection. It is, it's quality of the connection. You know, it's, it's, 
it caught, I mean, it actually was one of the things that provoked me into writing my first book. I was so dis in, uh, yeah, I was so dismayed with what people were teaching that it was a numbers game, that it was all about the three feet rule that if somebody was within three feet of me, you know, the expectation was that I would find some way to pique their interest about what I was doing. And the challenge was that if I could have, I, mean, I can have a conversation with a stranger. I'm an army brat. This is not the problem that I have. But the follow up is, and so having these scripts available for everyone, this is going to help. And I am super, super grateful. And so the, um, so the reality is that we have some pushback on a link to make sure that it's loading. And we want to make sure that it does. And it does. So the TSPS 18 link works. And I'll check on the other one. Um, oh, I see. And, they so don't I worry, see. people. Yeah, we'll make sure that all the links work. And Debbie, that's not your job. So you turn around and focus and share information. Okay. We got people to handle this. They will test all the links for you. Awesome. Um, I didn't get to share about the networking event. You mentioned it, but we haven't really shared about it. So can I share about that now? So people mm -hmm. the VIP know. So yeah, it is working fine. I had them two together. So just wanted to make uh -huh. sure. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's all about done. copy and paste rules. I know. <laughs> right. So the second link is um, I have these networking events that I'm hosting twice a month on the first and third Wednesday mm -hmm. of the month. Mm -hmm. And for the VIPs, I'm offering a six event bundle basically you can come for free for six events on my website it's 95 dollars. okay so you can come for free as a vip and practice like you said practice the scripts so i'm really excited to offer that and the events are attracting such incredible heart-based people from all over the world and it's just been um, so much fun. People are getting clients, they're creating great connections, they're having fun, and they're feeling part of a community like you started. What's the connection between suicide and networking? It's that people, when they feel connected and they have people that are in their lives that care about them, they're exactly. going to, it's gonna prevent, like you said, you're all about the prevention. Mm -hmm. It's gonna keep them upbeat and positive and, and feeling they won't be as isolated. They won't feel, people are feeling so isolated right now. And it's a great way to stay connected. So we've got three things going on and I try to prevent confusion and now they might be thoroughly confused. So I'm gonna put them into a structure. The first is that the scripts are for everyone who's here. These are the, just you showed up, here's Debbie's gift to you for showing up. And that's the bit.ly link bit.ly forward slash TSPS18. That's the gift. It is the three scripts that you can use for three different scenarios as far as follow-up, building a net that actually works for you. So that's the first gift. That's totally free. The second gift, the second link, sorry, the second link is successisagame.com. That's where you'll find the information about the every other week, the first and third Wednesdays of the month, the networking events that Debbie holds that are not free. And so it's $19. Come meet people at that level. I'm actually often a sponsor of that event. And sometimes there are keynote speakers and there's one coming up. So you know, there, there's a lot of possibilities for interaction there and joint ventures. The third link is not in the chat because the third link is only available to the VIPs, the very inspiring people, the people who said, that's me. I'm going to help inspire the world. You reach the VIP level by going to tspshow.org. TSP, like a teaspoon, show.org. And that's where you can become a VIP. And this gift, oh my goodness, I mean, a VIP pass to this entire event that gets you all of the VIP gifts, all of everything, is $47. And what Debbie's giving you is entree into six of her networking events. That's worth $120 right there. Yeah. All right, I rounded up 
<laughs> forgive me. It is worth a hundred and fourteen. There we go. All right, so we'll be accurate. So those are three possibilities. We want to make sure that you know this one's free, this one's not, and this one's VIP. And so now that we hopefully have cleared up any confusion, <laughs> hey, Debbie, what's the one thing that if someone knew this about showing up authentically, they would never be afraid of networking again? The one thing, so I believe we've already mentioned it, that when you show, when you let go of your agenda and don't go to the event to sell and to find clients, but you're going there to show up in service, to help people, to make a difference, to share resources, to refer people to them, however it is that you can support them, and to be able to ask the question, what do you have going on in your business in the next three to six months that I can support you with? Like being prepared with those questions, right? Then okay. you're not going to be networking. That's the question of the day. <laughs> what if you showed up to a networking event and asked the other people, the ones that you resonate with, not right. everybody, but of the course. ones you're attracted to, and you just ask them, what do you have coming up in the next three to four months that I can support you in? Oh my goodness, you know, whoa, all the stress just comes out of my body because now it's not about, am I putting my best foot forward? Do I have the right thing to say? You know, it's about, oh my God, you actually might care about me. Right. And people are starving, especially now for someone to just listen to them, right? They want to be listened to. They don't want to be talked at. And that's why I was saying, be prepared with powerful questions that you're going to ask people to get curious and then be present and listen, make eye contact. Don't be looking around. Well, at live events, you get more distracted here you, you know, on, on Zoom, you're not. But when you do go to networking events, don't be looking around at who, who else you want to go talk to, because mm -hmm. the best, the biggest gift you can give people is your presence and your focus and making that eye contact so they know that you are with them and that you really care about them and you're really listening. It, it just makes all the difference in the world, Jackie. We call this listening 2.0 because the one human, basic human need is being heard. And it's not one that people talk about. You know, they talk about food, what, water, yeah. food, shelter, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Right on the edge after air, water, food, and shelter is being heard. Yeah. And there was a generation or more than a generation raised with the injunction that children were to be seen and not heard. And what happened is that we disenfranchised generations where we don't trust that other people care enough to actually listen to us without problem solving, trying to fix us, you know, judging us. And so this skill is just the greatest gift you can give to the human race. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, if you want to serve mankind, learn to listen. Yeah. Well, we, we call that step two. Step one, is be willing to stop being busy. And then step two is being willing to listen without judging, yes. problem solving, strategizing, fixing. Yep. Yeah. When I used to network in person, one of the first things I would ask people, because I was always searching for how I could help somebody when I met them, is I'd ask, do you network a lot? And they'd say, um, no, well, I'm just starting network, or maybe they'd say yes, and I'll ask, are you looking for other networking events to attend? And I used to be the networking queen. So I like knew all the events in my area. Oh, but my daytimer looked like alphabet soup. <laughs> so I was a member of the BWN and the EWN and the D and yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I would say, would you like me? And then I would go a step further. I'd say, I know these events that you'd really love. Would you like me to make the, an email introduction to the person who runs the group? And they're like, 
who is this woman? I love her. I wanted, and then they were just like, oh my God, she's trying to help me. She didn't even tell me what she does yet. Like, you know what, what they're thinking, right? And it immediately it creates that connection. And you want to, so you want to be asking those questions to find out whatever you have resources for that you can help somebody with. And I had all these networking events that I could share with people. So just be thinking, this is another way that you can prepare. How, how are you going to help people? How are you going to support them? Well, there we go. Welcome to the world according to Debbie Hoffman. And I just love it. Thank you so, so very much for coming on the show, being willing to help us connect the dots into how connecting with other people is part of the process of making a bigger buffer between you and the ledge. Yeah. So thank you, Debbie. I just... Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. Thank you for inviting me. I feel honored to be here and and I hope something that I shared made a difference with your listeners, because that's what I'm all about. So, um, and please come to my networking event. We have one this Wednesday, the 19th. We have an incredible speaker, Jay Facet. So come, it's only $19. You get one client, it will more than pay for it. But just the, the time to be with other people and connect on a deep level. There's lots and lots of time for breakout rooms for people to really get to know each other. And, um, and then we have the speaker as well, so. There we go. It doesn't get any better than that. So the link is in the chat. And thank you, Debbie, for being part of this mission to make suicide, especially teen suicide, a thing of the past. You're so welcome. Thank you for inviting me. I really loved being here with you and, and I love what you're all about and the mission that you're on. It's just really inspiring, Jackie. So thank you for the work that you're doing in the world.